Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie, if you're new. Today I'm gonna to share with you four super easy Instant Pot recipes. My Instant Pot is probably my number one go-to kitchen appliance. We use it all the time, especially as a busy mom of three. I have several other videos where I share strictly Instant Pot recipes, so I will link that playlist in the cards and you can watch them after this if you need more inspiration for meal ideas. In this video, I'm gonna share with you recipes for chicken tinga, beef stroganoff, chicken pot pie soup with biscuits, and chicken pad thai, all in the Instant Pot. So let's go ahead and get started. The first recipe we are going to make today is chicken tinga. I said the first thing we're making is chicken tinga. This would make a nice filling for either tacos or burritos. You could put it on top of nachos. First thing we do is slice up an onion and then plug in the Instant Pot and turn it to the saute mode. Once it's hot, add in your oil. I use avocado oil and then add in your onions and you're gonna cook those down for a few minutes while the onions are cooking go ahead and salt and pepper both sides of your chicken breasts I don't actually put pepper on most of my things because my kids don't like the look of it I chopped up a few garlic cloves I keep mine in the freezer in a big bag so I add those in and then add in a can of fire roasted tomatoes and add in a couple chipotle peppers and adobo sauce you can just put in the adobo sauce if you don't want any heat these are pretty spicy next we're gonna add in quite a few different spices starting with oregano this sauce is very flavorful Next, add in some coriander, cumin, some salt, and some paprika. Next, add in chicken broth. You could use chicken stock. Mix all those spices and everything together and then add in your chicken breasts and make sure that the chicken breasts are completely coated in all the sauce and the onions. Place the lid on your Instant Pot, make sure the pressure valve is sealed shut and then you're gonna pressure cook on high for eight minutes. Once it's done cooking, you're gonna do a quick release. I use a towel not to cover the steam, but to redirect the steam away from my cabinets. And then everything is all done. Remove the chicken to a cutting board so that you can shred it. For the sauce, if you don't want it super spicy, I would remove the chipotle peppers, but if you like spice, go ahead and keep them in and use an immersion blender or a food processor or a blender to blend the sauce together. Now, technically, I think I was supposed to have had more chicken breast cooked with this recipe, but I didn't have enough chicken on hand, so there was too much sauce. If there's too much sauce, go ahead and remove some of the sauce before you add the chicken back in. And today, I'm making tacos. They were so delicious, so flavorful. That smoky flavor came through from the fire to tomatoes and the tomatoes peppers. I just topped with sour cream, cilantro, and some lime juice, but these also would make delicious burritos. Top them over nachos. Many different ways to use this. You also could probably freeze it and it'd be delicious. I will have this recipe as well as all the other recipes from today's video linked in the description box below. Next, we're gonna make beef stroganoff. Don't knock until you try it. This is actually pretty good. This is the only recipe that was not gluten-free, but you could definitely use gluten-free noodles if you can find them. So first, turn your Instant Pot to the saute mode. Add in some avocado oil or your oil of choice, and then you're gonna chop an onion. Add the onions to your Instant Pot and you're gonna cook those down for a little bit. Once they're cooked down, then you can add in your stew meat and you're going to not cook these all the way, but just sear all of the sides. While your meat is cooking, you're going to prepare your mushrooms. So I don't know if you knew this, but you're not really supposed to wash mushrooms underwater. You're supposed to wipe the dirt off of them. So that's what I did here. I kept the stems on because all of it's edible. And then you're going to add some Worcestershire sauce to, I can't ever say that word, to your Instant Pot, as well as some beef stock. And this is where some of the ingredients are gluten-free. So you're going to pour some beef stock into a, a bowl, just a little bit, and then add in some tapioca flour to make a slurry. And this is what's going to thicken the sauce for your beef stroganoff. Mix it all together until there's no clumps and then pour the slurry into your Instant Pot as well as some more beef broth and then mix everything together. Lastly, add in your mushrooms, place the lid on your Instant Pot, make sure that pressure valve is sealed shut and you're gonna pressure cook on high for 10 minutes. 
Once the time is up, go ahead and do a quick release. Again, I'm using that towel to direct the steam away from my cabinets. I've been doing this for so long. If you're afraid of getting burned from the steam, you can use tongs or a wooden spoon to do this. And then now I'm gonna add in my egg noodles. Egg noodles are, I think, the traditional uh, noodle for this dish, so yummy. If you can find them gluten-free, if you're a gluten-free eater, even better. I could not find them at my store though. And you're going to pressure cook one more time on high for five minutes. Once the time is up, do one more quick release. And now it's time to make the sauce super creamy by adding in sour cream. You could also use Greek yogurt instead, or if you wanted to make it dairy-free, you could use coconut cream. Stir it all together and that is it. Your beef stroganoff is all done. This was a really easy one. It's a really tasty one. It makes quite a bit and my whole family loved it. Next up is chicken pot pie soup. This was another favorite. My four-year-old son adored this dish and asked for it for breakfast the next morning. The first thing you're gonna do is prepare your veggies. So I'm chopping up some celery and then I will also chop up an onion. Turn your instant pot to the saute mode, let it get nice and hot. And then today I'm switching it up and using coconut oil, but you could use any oil here. Add in your onions and stir those up. Let them cook down a little bit. While they're cooking down, you can go ahead and peel your potatoes and chop some garlic. Like I said, I like to keep my garlic peeled in the freezer. I just buy a big bag of it already peeled from Sam's Club or Costco, pop it in the freezer, and I can pull some out as I need it. I'm using gluten-free flour today to thicken the soup, but you could use regular flour instead if you want. Add in some chicken broth and a can of coconut milk. The Trader Joe's brand is a really clean version if you're looking for one like that. And then give everything a stir. Add in your celery and your chopped potatoes. Throw in your chicken breasts. And add in your fresh herbs. I washed these, bought them from the grocery store, washed them up, and then I'm just de-stemming them and then I'll give them a quick chop before adding them in. But if you don't want to use fresh or you don't have it on hand, then you could use dried herbs instead. Sprinkle those herbs in, add in some salt, and then you're gonna add in a bag of frozen peas and carrots. Give everything a good stir. Place the lid on your Instant Pot and pressure cook on high for 11 minutes. While I was making the soup, Andrew was making the biscuits. You could definitely make Biscuits from scratch, either gluten-free or regular, but we're just using a Red Lobster box mix and they're actually really good. Once the soup is cooked, go ahead and do a quick release and remove the chicken to a cutting board to shred it. I actually cannot stand shredding and I don't like using the hand mixer to do it either. So I started to shred it and then ended up just chopping it up with a knife. I did want to thicken my soup, so I added just a little bit of a slurry of tapioca flour and water. I didn't add all of it, I just wanted it a little bit thicker. And then I added my chicken, and that's it you guys. The soup is super easy, it's super delicious, tastes just like uh, chicken pot pie, and then you add that biscuit, it's like deconstructed chicken pot pie. Super delicious and great for a cozy winter day. Last up is our favorite meal, and that is chicken pad thai. So easy, so good. The noodles don't get mushy because you actually don't cook those in the Instant Pot in case you were wondering. So the first thing I'm doing is chopping up some chicken breast. I just cubed it. Next, we're making the sauce. I'm using coconut aminos, sesame seed oil. I forgot to show myself adding all this in and some rice vinegar. You can see that we use rice vinegar quite a bit because we make chicken pad thai quite a bit. Um, so I used all the what was left in the bottle. And then I'm also adding in some brown sugar. Now you could change this up. You could use any other kind of sweetener like um, coconut sugar and then add in some peanut butter and some spices. I'm using ground ginger, but you could also use fresh here. And then some red chili flakes and some water. It looks brown here because I had previously measured the aminos in the same uh, measuring cup. And then I'm adding in some garlic. I love my garlic press if I can find it. Sometimes my kids take off with it and squish other things in it. And then stir that sauce all together and then add in your chicken. Thank you. 
Place the lid on your Instant Pot, set the pressure valve to the sealed position, and then you're gonna pressure cook on high for seven minutes. In the meantime, you're going to cook your noodles. So I followed the recipes instructions rather than the package instructions, and I wish that I hadn't done it this way. The package instructions have them boil, just like spaghetti noodles on the stove. This way has you just soaking the noodles in hot water, but honestly, mine never cooked up enough, so I ended up having to cook it on the stove. Once the timer on the Instant Pot turns off, go ahead and do a quick release. I did all of my chopping together, so I chopped up these green onions that we will actually add into the dish. I also chopped up some cilantro for the top, as well as chopped up some peanuts for a topping as well. Add in your rice noodles. Now, if you follow the recipe instructions exactly, the sauce will be a little too, um, they'll just be too much sauce. So what I did was just drain out some of that sauce and um, got it to be the sauciness that I wanted and it turned out just fine, it was delicious. Then add in some raw grated carrot as well as your chopped green onion and mix everything together and that's it, it's all done. For toppings, I just topped with cilantro and some chopped peanuts. And if you have some lime, you could give it a good squeeze of lime. And that's it, super delicious. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you all enjoyed this one. Let me know if you try any of these recipes. Like I said, I'll have them linked in the description box below for you. Follow me on Instagram for more food inspiration and meal ideas, as well as recipes. I love you all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.